Well, we're live in Washington, D.C., and this city is buzzing. Nobody knows for sure what's going to happen, but if this bill does pass the House, what happens next in the United States Senate? Join us live with Senator George Lemieux, who is a United States Senator. So tell us, what is your plan? Well, in the Senate, we're going to make sure that we enforce the rules. If this thing comes over to us, I guess now on Tuesday, we're going to make sure the American people know what's in the bill. And the more they know about it, the more they seem less to like it. Well, one of the interesting things that Senator, former uh, Senator Santorum raised is the whole issue about whether or not it affects Social Security, if that somehow is going to create a problem for this reconciliation bill that the House Democrats so desperately want to be packaged in as you know, with this uh, Senate bill. Do you know anything about this? Yeah, the, the issue here is about the Budget Act, and if it, if it affects Social Security, it's not in order according to the Senate rules, according to the Senate Budget Act. So a point of order will be made, and for them to overcome that point of order, they're going to have to get 60 votes. Well, we know now they don't have 60 votes because of the election of Scott Brown in Massachusetts. And I guess it really shows the problem when you try to package all of this bad stuff together, there's going to be some consequences. What is your level of certainty that this is the path that it's going to go? Well, it, I don't, we'll have to see what happens tonight. I mean, we're still. I mean, assuming out it, hope. okay, right. assuming it passes, okay, and let's jump ahead. And, uh, let's assume it passes, and it gets to this whole issue of reconciliation and the Social Security. How how much of an issue is this? What's your level of certainty that this truly is an issue that could uh, kill the reconciliation? Well, it is an issue. It's a question of whether or not they're going to be able to overcome it. The abortion issue is not proper for reconciliation. There are others, and whether or not they can try to muster the 60 votes, they've got 59 votes now. Uh, there's not. Gonna to be one Republican who votes for this bill, Greta, in the House. There's not going to be one Republican who votes for this bill in the Senate. And it kind of historically shows you why it's a bad bill. We've never had such a big piece of legislation pass purely on partisan lines. You know, it's sort of interesting me, um, because we're here in Washington, we can go up on Capitol Hill and we sort of troll the halls and look and talk to people all the time. And one of the things that when I saw the Republican congressman coming over to the United States Senate today, I was a little suspicious that there was sort of a lot of planning going on with the anticipation this will pass and now we get into Plan B. Were you, were you advised? advising the House Republicans what to do today in sort of some staged plan or not? Well, I, I don't think it's a, as much of a plan as that. We certainly talked to our colleagues and we met with them th during the week and our leadership's been meeting constantly about it and we're just trying to put up a good defense against this bad bill. Look, we don't think it's a good idea to cut $523 billion out of Medicare, health care for seniors. We don't think it's a good idea to raise taxes by $569 billion and not do the one thing that all Americans wanted us to do, which is lower the cost of health insurance for people who have it. All this really is is putting 30 a million more Americans into health care. 15 million are going to go into Medicaid, which is a program that's failing. So I'm of the camp that we should try to fix the programs we have before we endeavor on new ones. All right. When you sat down, you told me that I once taught your law school class as a guest lecturer, which I'm very flattered. So I'm curious whether you know the answers. Maybe you don't. But does an executive order like the president signed, does that trump legislation, a statute? Yeah. You know, and I, I don't have the answer. Maybe you do. I, I taught your class, but maybe you can teach me right well, now. Well, the, the answer is it doesn't. Uh, Congress makes the law. An executive order cannot conflict with current law. An executive order can be trumped by anything that the Congress does. In fact, an executive order is only as good as a president. The next time there's a new president, a new president can issue an, a new order revoking an executive order. So an executive order is sort of one step below legislation. All right. Well, I don't know if we're going to get windburn here uh, sitting here, but the Senator, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thank you, Greta. Next, our breaking news coverage, if we don't get blown off this roof, is going to continue live from Washington, D.C. Now, what is the real cost of this? Bill, we report you decide that's coming up next.